Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my presentation. First of all, let's see what my research is about. It is about finding the effect of temperature and the source of nitrogen on the effectiveness of nitrification inhibition by disandiamide in soil. First, let's look at the research background. We all know nitrogen fertilization is a crucial requirement in commercial agriculture. But having lower nitrogen use efficiency is one of the main issues related to this nitrogen fertilization. As an example, for world cereal production, the nitrogen use efficiency is around 35%. Therefore, scientists have introduced some methods to increase nitrogen use efficiency. As an example, use of nitrification inhibitors, use of controlled and slow release fertilizers, and following appropriate methods to apply nitrogen fertilizers are some of the examples. Out of these, use of nitrification inhibitors is widely used in the world. And also, out of the commercially available nitrification inhibitors, DCD or disandiamide is widely used by the farmers in the world. But there is an issue related to this DCD. From one application to another, the DCD efficiency does not seem to be uniform. The reason for this is changing climatic and edific factors affected on DCD. As an example, a change in temperature can affect on the DCD efficiency. In addition, a change in nitrogen source also affects on the DCD efficiency changes. So that it is clear, if we want to have the maximum benefit out of DCD application, we have to identify this DCD efficiency change in patterns. So that several researchers had been conducted to find out these patterns. But most of these researchers have been centered to the temperate region. Unfortunately, these results cannot be applied into the tropical conditions. Therefore, during my research, I focused on finding the DCD efficiency variation under tropical climatic conditions. As the initiation, first I set my objectives. My first objective was to determine the effect of temperature on the effectiveness of nitrification inhibition by DCD in soil. The second objective was to determine the effect of different synthetic nitrogen and organic fertilizers on the effectiveness of nitrification inhibition by DCD in soil. After setting these two objectives, Two separate experiments were conducted to achieve these two. The first experiment was about finding the effect of temperature on DC. First, soil was collected. Red yellow pot solid or RYP soil was collected from Maharashtra and Regasol soil was collected from Kalpitya. After that, soils were prepared and divided into three batches. Each of these batch was separately incubated under three different temperatures. After a week, four different treatments were introduced to each of these batch. The first treatment was the control treatment. The second treatment was soil with DCD. The third treatment, soil with urea. And the final treatment, soil with urea plus DCD. During the whole experiment, the gravimetric moisture content was maintained at 30%. After the 48-hour incubation period, the nitrate concentration was measured using the rapid colorimetric method. Now let's look at the second experiment. It is about finding the effect of nitrogen source on DCD. Here, a leaching column experiment was conducted using only regasol soil. 
first soil preparation was done, followed by the bleaching column preparation. After that, nine different treatments were introduced into these bleaching columns. The first treatment was the control treatment. After that, three different nitrogen sources, as urea, compost, and poultry manure, was added to leaching columns with and without DCD separately. After that, slow release nitrogen fertilizer was added as the ninth treatment. Finally, five leaching events were conducted and leached nitrate concentrations were measured using the rapid colorimetric method. After obtaining all these data, they were statistically analyzed. For that, PASW Statistics 18 software was used. Then, in order to find the significant differences among factors, one-way ANOVA test was used for normally distributed data and proskal wallis test was used for non-normally distributed data. Finally, Spearman's rank order correlation was also conducted. Now let's look at the results section. Here you can observe the graph representing the soil nitrate concentration variation under three different temperatures. Here you can observe Pegasol soil is always having lower nitrate concentration compared to RYP. And also the significant differences of nitrate concentration between three temperatures is observed only in Regasol soil. The reason for this observation can be explained using the organic matter and clay contents of these two soils. RYP soil is having higher organic matter and higher clay content. When organic matter and clay contents are increasing, DCD availability decreases. In that situation, DCD efficiency reduces. This is the reason for DCD to perform low in the RYP soil compared to Regasol soil. Now look at this graph and this is related to the first experiment and it represents the percent reduction in nitrate formation with DCD. Here you can observe the percentage reduction in nitrate of RYP soil is higher under lower temperatures, while in Regasol soils, the percentage reduction in nitrate formation is higher in higher temperatures. The reason for this observation can be explained using the acroclimatic conditions of two soil collected areas. The Regasol soils was collected from Calpitia. Calpitia is usually having higher average annual temperatures so that nitrifiers or the microorganisms who are involved in nitrification have been adapted to higher temperatures and they perform well under higher temperatures. When the nitrification process was happening well under higher temperatures, the DCD efficiency have also accelerated. Similarly, in RYP soil, the nitrifiers who are used to do in RYP soil have been adapted and performed well under lower temperatures. And here also, when the nitrification process is happening well under lower temperatures, we can observe higher nitrification reduction efficiencies by the DCD. This graph is related to the second experiment and it represents how nitrate is released from treatments after 24 hours. Here, here the nitrate concentration have been significantly reduced due to DCD only with urea as the nitrogen source. Along with compost and poultry manure, we can observe a significant reduction in nitrate concentration. The reason for this observation also, the increased organic matter contents due to the 
composed and faulty magma application. By increased organic matter content, DCD availability have reduced, and due to that, DCD efficiency have also reduced. By considering these results, we can come into some conclusions. According to the first experiment, we can come into the conclusion that effectiveness of DCD at different temperatures is inconsistent among soil types. By the second experiment, we can come into a conclusion that DCD is effective in suppressing nitrification in regular soil soils when applied with urea, but not with compost or poultry matter. In order to develop this research further, I have few suggestions. First one is additional measurement of ammonium ions and ammonia gas emission. During current experiment, we only measured nitrate concentrations. But in order to have a comprehensive understanding about how DCD is affecting on nitrogen transformation, this will be useful. In addition, using a more sensitive method to measure nitrate ion concentration is also useful. And also, increasing DCD application rates for higher clay and organic matter containing soils also can be done. Finally, I have to acknowledge Ms. Katie Hansika. She conducted all the laboratory experiments and I collected data from her experiments. These are the references I went through for this presentation and thank you for your time and your attention.